World War I, the Great War, the war to end all wars. Whatever you call it, the First World War was one of the most influential wars in history, effectively beginning the decline of European imperialism and monarchical influence in Europe, as well as setting the groundwork for World War II. Everyone knows the story of why World War I happened. A Serbian nationalist shot and killed the heir to the Austro-Hungarian throne. The Austro-Hungarian Empire declared war on Serbia. Russia declared war on Austria-Hungary to protect Serbia. Germany declared war on Russia in support of their ally, and then declared war on France, invading Belgium to reach Paris, causing the United Kingdom to declare war on Germany. There's some more to it, but that's the moral of the story, and everyone wanted to kill everyone. After everyone had finished declaring their wars, the initial Allied powers consisted of France, Russia, Great Britain, and Japan, with Italy joining a bit later, and America joining much later. There were quite a few other nations that joined the Allies too. The Central Powers consisted of Germany, Austria-Hungary, and the Ottoman Empire, and later Bulgaria. What made this war so deadly was the use of modern weapons, planes, machine guns, gas, and so on, clashing with outdated methods of battle, where nations essentially would just throw waves of men at the problem. Eventually, the commanders of the nations learned that this wasn't going to get them anywhere, and both sides hunkered down in the trenches for the long haul. After five years of fighting, and some fresh troops coming in from across the Atlantic, Germany was forced to surrender in the Treaty of Versailles on November 11th, 1919, which forced such heavy reparations on them that it caused their economy to collapse, leading to the Weimar Republic to print off insane amounts of money, causing hyperinflation to wreak havoc. By November of 1923, one US dollar was worth 4.2 trillion German marks. Eventually, this led to the rise of the National Socialist German Workers' Party, better known as the Nazis. This is all stuff that we know, however. The causes and effects of World War I are some of the most studied things in history. One of the most popular questions that people ask when studying these things, though, is what if Germany had managed to take Paris? And what if the Allies had given up the fighting before the Central Powers? What if Germany had won World War I? The first questions that need to be asked is, how could this have happened? Well, there are a bunch of ways this could have happened, so I'll just lay out a few. I mentioned this in a previous video, which you should watch if you haven't already, hint hint, nudge nudge, that Britain dominated the seas, but they got the vast majority of their oil from Mexico. If Mexico were to, say, burn their oil wells as they retreat from an invading America, then Britain's navy would be kind of screwed for some time. This would give the German navy an upper hand, but that would not be nearly enough to push them over the edge of being able to win World War I. Well, with America invading and occupying Mexico, then America can't enter into the European theater of World War I. So that means there won't be an extra pressure applied to German forces. For this scenario to work though, there will have to be one more, much more fundamental shift to the World War I story. In my other video, I implied that Germany would take Paris later in World War I to declare victory, but in reality, it couldn't happen like that. For Germany to have been able to have the sweeping victory it wanted, they would have had to take down France fast. Very fast. What I'm saying is that the Schlieffen plan would have had to have worked and Germany would have had to have been able to invade Belgium and trap and destroy the French army while quickly taking Paris. The destruction of the British naval oil still makes a huge difference, because it prevents the British from being able to strangle Germany or protect their own shipping, but it doesn't make or break the war. Germany's ability to cripple the French's fighting capability does. So, Germany declares war on France in early August. They request for free access through Belgium, Belgium tells Germany to shove it, and the Kaiser rushes through Belgium and attacks straight into the heart of France. The British honor the promise to defend Belgium and declare war on Germany. Germany, though surprised by the British honoring their treaty, keep pushing rapidly, without hesitation. The fighting is brutal, but fast. Key components of the French army are surprised and forced back into a retreat, if not outright destroyed and routed. The Germans command great success in just the first few weeks until they make it within miles of Paris. The French, knowing the Germans were obviously headed for their capital, have their troops hunker down outside the city, 
in a last ditch attempt to protect it. The fighting goes on for longer and is much bloodier, much deadlier, but in the end, Germany prevails. By the end of 1914, France's capital has fallen to the German Empire. Now, contrary to what the German high command would have wanted to believe, this likely would not have been the outright end of the French involvement in the war. Unlike in the Franco-Prussian War, France actually has allies now, and they would have held out, hoping for support by the British, the Russians, the Italians, basically anyone that could come and help them. They would have relocated their capital to somewhere far away from the Germans, and continued the battle against them. At this point though, it doesn't look good at all. The British Navy is already starting to suffer from the lack of oil supply, and Russia is just getting their teeth kicked in. They struggled in our timeline when France was able to hold out against Germany, but with the Germans being able to focus a bit more on the Eastern Front, and the Russian Revolution heating up, there's not much time left for the Russian Empire. They would be able to hold off Germany for a couple of years, if for no other reason than the vast amount of land and people between Germany and Moscow, but defeat is inevitable. Just as in our timeline, Russia concedes defeat and gives up large tracts of land to the Central Powers, but we'll talk about what they do with all that land a bit later. First, let's go back to the Western Front, where the Allies are doing their absolute best to hold off the Central Powers, who now have forced France into small pockets of land. Americans start shipping over to Europe to help fight with the Allies, signing up with the French Foreign Legion. The British Empire also sends as many troops as they can, but it's just too late. The French government can't take it anymore, and they make it clear they are ready to concede feet to Germany, and Britain follows suit. The delegates from each major power that fought in the war all meet together in Geneva, Switzerland, and hammer out the details of the peace treaty. This treaty ends the First World War, and puts the German Empire on the forefront of European politics. In the next video, I'll go over the details of that peace treaty. How do you think Germany could have won World War I? My theory is just one of many, and I want to hear what you guys have to say. I know this video was a bit shorter than most, I just needed something to transition into the next video. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, it really helps me out. Also, if you're not already, go ahead and subscribe to my channel for more content. Ring the bell next to it to get notifications for my videos, since I don't upload very frequently. If you want to stay up to date with what's going on with me and my channel, you can follow my Twitter. Links to that and my Facebook are down below. Thank you very much for watching, this has been Historical Hindsight and I'll be seeing you soon.